The sample calculations done here are based on the following MAP maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration parameter for short period and site foundation factor associated with site class D, which can be found by accessing the site information icon in the toolbar. As of now, the results show no values under the dead and EV holddown force categories found in the holddown design table under either rigid or flexible seismic design. The reason being is that I haven't entered any manual load so far. Entering manual loads, such as a dead load, is done by the loads and forces icon in the toolbar. In order to demonstrate the effect of the vertical earthquake load in the analysis, we are going to input two manual point dead loads of 1,000 pounds each. To do so, click on Add, select Dead Load, Point Load, apply to wall line A at a distance of 0 with a magnitude of 1,000 pounds, and then select OK. Repeat the same process, but for a location of 18 feet. Rerun the design. To see the implication of the vertical seismic effect, go to the hold down design table in seismic design, flexible or rigid diaphragm design, and then hold down design. Looking at the table, you can see the section allocated to the tensile allowable stress design hold down force. This table only looks at the worst case tensile force by looking at the force coming from the two directions to determine the critical tensile force that the hold down must resist. It is important to look at the table to see where hold downs are required as the elevation view only shows the required hold downs based on the direction of the force shown while the table looks at both cases and determines the critical case. To see the applied point dead loads, we have to go to Loads and Forces, select wall line A, and then go to the elevation view. As you can see, we now have two point dead loads. Therefore, the load case found in the table is always the following load case, and with a few manipulations can be brought to this form, which is convenient to understand the table. First, we will display the seismic flexible diaphragm design by selecting Show Seismic West to East, South to North. And then it is also required to show the hold down forces as separate components by the following Show Forces Hold Down and then Separate. Therefore, looking at the first point dead load applied on shear wall A at the beginning of the wall, you can see that the dead load is helping resist the overturning moment, thus it is factored by 0.6, which is the value found in the table. Now, in order to determine the vertical seismic effects, the equations presented earlier and the information shown in the building site icon in the toolbar need to be used. First, the necessary site-specific information is presented here. Then, the maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration parameter for short period is determined using this equation. The design spectral response acceleration parameter at short periods is then obtained by the following equation. Finally, the seismic factored effect is obtained by the following equation by multiplying the SDS to the following factors and the result is the one presented in the table. As you can see, for line A, wall A1 to the left end, the EV component is 84 as obtained previously. Now considering the second point load, which is located over an opening, Depending upon the force direction, the dead load values on the side of the opening will be different. In the case where it is helping resist the overturning moment, it will be multiplied by 0.6, and when contributing, it will be multiplied by 1. 
Although the compression case value is presented in the elevation view, only the critical tensile case is reported in the hold down design tables. What is important here is to understand how the program distributes the forces to both hold downs located on both sides of the opening for a segmented wall. The force is distributed assuming a simply supported beam with a point load. However, the length of the simply supported beam is not the length of the opening. Instead, it is the summation of the hold down offset on both sides of the opening plus the length of the opening. The value of the hold down offset is found in the hold downs tab in the settings. Here a value of 1.5 inch is used. In order to arrive to the forces distributed to the hold downs, the following has to be done. By taking the sum of moments, counterclockwise being positive, about point R1, we obtain R2, and by subtracting R2 to the force, we obtain R1. As you can see in the elevation view, for the west to east force direction, R1 is the same on the elevation view because it is on the compression side and is multiplied by the 1.0 load case combination factor. The value of R2, on the other hand, is multiplied by the 0.6 load combination factor since it is on the tension side. In the table, you will only find the result for the tensile allowable stress design. Therefore, both reactions are multiplied by 0.6 and are the ones shown in the dead column. The vertical seismic load effect is obtained the same way as earlier. These values are the same as the one found in the vertical seismic effect column. The following column, which stands for combine, is the result of the dead load subtracted to the shear value and the vertical seismic effect added to the shear value. It is also possible in the elevation view to view the results separately like shown or combine which will express the resultant of the three components by selecting combine and show forces hold downs and then combine. Finally, the story drifts table are accessed by go to table, seismic design, flexible or rigid diaphragm design, and story drift. The tables have the same format for flexible and rigid analysis. In this table, it is possible to find the total drift per story as well as the allowable drift per story which is classified according to their respective levels and the force direction. The wall height per level is also displayed. The table is mainly divided into two sections. The actual drift computed by the program and the allowable drift both determined from the ASC 7 standard. In order to determine the maximum deflection at level x, the following terms are required. dx, which is determined by this equation, the deflection amplification factor from the following table, the deflection at the location of interest obtained by analysis, and the importance factor previously determined from the following section. These four variables are shown under the actual story drift section. The shear line on which the maximum story deflection occurs is shown. Furthermore, in Shearwall's version 10, the center of mass location, deflection at center of mass obtained from interpolation, and maximum amplified deflection at the center of mass were added to the actual story drift section. The next section is the allowable story drift determined by the following table. and function of the type of structure and its associated risk category. The variable HSX is the story height including the joist below the considered level and is used to obtain the allowable drift by the equation provided in the table. The drift ratio is the maximum deflection to the allowable story drift, thus a ratio smaller than one indicates a design that does not fail. Similarly to the actual story drift section, 
the ratio of the maximum deflection at the center of mass to the allowable story drift was added. This concludes the section of seismic information and story drift, which also coincides with the end of the series of tutorial 5.